pressure of being the last speaker. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so um, my name is Gretin, like um, the same as like, Gretin Dang, which is like Red Bull. Actually, like when I was born, it was like so small that my mom like were afraid that like I'll die someday. So she named me Gretin rather than like a buffalo because buffalo is stupid. <laughs> so she named me like a bull to grow to be a strong and now I'm a very strong person. Basically, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully in a, in a right way. Right now, um, I'm going to talk about my project, which is called like, um, Disrupt University. The goal of Disrupt University is not really like, to bring Silicon Valley to Thailand, but basically to bring like, um, the best two methodology and learning from Silicon Valley and also some mentors to come to Thailand and plant the seed of innovation that hopefully will be a change agent to make our, our country better for the next decade. And um, this is like where I was born. I was born in Kampang Pet. And actually, like, um, it's a very small one, very small provinces. Many people, even like for Thai people, find it difficult to locate it on Google Map. You know, like, and, and actually, like, um, there's a rumor that like, for Google Map itself, like, it got it wrong like, sometimes when you Google it. You know, it's so small town. And it was so small guy, and I was born prematurely. I was really, really small. And um, I, was not, I was not confident at all. I was like, and I think like, um, I wouldn't amount too much in my life. I would be like a below average person. But then like that kind of perception of myself was changed forever by the encounter with one normal, ordinary teachers. In, um, I study in a um, school called like a um, temple school called Wat Kuyang. And um, you know, like being like a um, school in that like um, far like provinces, basically we have limited access to like science and lab equipment. So it's very difficult to teach like advanced like subject like science that kind of thing. But then like, and I I don't expect that much out of my life anyway, so I don't really care. So, <laughs> but this is the um, the encounter that changed my life forever. So um, that that science teacher, even though like rather than like being restricted. To the, um, to the lack of like, equipment or like, tools for teaching, he brought that off of the classroom. He exposed us to the nature, and he teaches us science by like, um, okay, like, he teaches us the surface tension by explaining the concept of surface tension, by explaining the, um, the water spider. And then like, he also teaches us many concepts and tells us like, science is actually the language of God to explain you know, like the phenomenon, and that's how he teaches science. So it's basically like, wow, I was like amazed. Wow, really, like science is like language of God, blah, blah, blah. It's so big a concept, and for a child, I was stunned, you know? And I was like, wow, and this is like, actually like a stupid guy like me can understand science as well by having like a very good teacher, you know? And I believe like, wow, and then it's, it's like, it's not only the knowledge of science, but also like, you know, you become starting to be more confident in yourself. Because like back then, I was like the smallest child in the, in the class, and it was like so small, I, I was like not really confident, but that experience has transformed my life. You become gradually more confident and more confident. It transformed your mentality, not only your knowledge, but everything. It's like a big part of me right now still like was contributable to that experience. So passion, for my passion, I have a very deep passion in education, and I believe that like one day, I really hope that I can be as close to that normal teachers that taught me and transformed many students' life. And then I went on from like a below average guy. I got a gold medal in National Physics Olympic and um, study in Jolalongkorn University. And, um, and then I got into Stanford. <laughs> well, thank you. It's a pretty good university, and um, yeah, it's a pretty good university. And actually, like sometimes I, you know, like I believe that like I got into by mistake because like they mistake my name, which is wrong, Roche, to the other Indian guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my that's my belief. But probably like it's it's better not to believe like that, you know. <laughs> and then I joined Google at its headquarter in Silicon Valley, and I learned a lot. It's a great experiences. And after that, I left Google and started my own company and into Black Box Accelerator. It's the, um, they have a program to bring international entrepreneurs to come to Silicon Valley and immerse themselves. And then like, you have a chance to pitch to like, um, like, uh, like venture capitalists that have like $100 billion like, investment, that kind of thing. You know? And it's really like, transformed my life once again. And I, and I mean, like, for me, it's like all oh, I brought any experiences. And then like, after seven years in Silicon Valley, 
I noticed that this is the golden era of entrepreneurship and and startups. Basically, like the the cost of like starting a startup is so low, and then like you can you can grow it very fast, very easily. And this is the golden era of entrepreneurship. And there's like a tons of startup movement like all over the world. Startup America, Startup Chile, Startup Malaysia, Startup Singapore. And then I try to Google it. And then like I believe Google. I work for Google. And 50 plus more. There's no Thailand. So. <laughs> And then, like, even though like Thailand, we have like a wide brand like Thai SME, but startup, but for the startup scene, it's still like, it's still like small back then. And so I decided to contribute to do something. I know that it's so difficult for one person. You know, I was scared. I was like, you know, but I believe that like I want to combine my passion for education. I want to take a step, at, to make myself close to that like high school teacher to transform people's life. I know it's far, it's like a very far and very long journey, but I decided like, hey, I have to do something to this beloved country. So I come back to Thailand and combine my passion in education and startup and to start Disrupt University. The goal, like, the, you know, like um, the tagline, you know, we, because we have limited space, so we have to say like bringing Silicon Valley to Thailand is so catchy, <laughs> you know? It's like marketing gimmick, but the goal is like, it's, I believe it's, it's wrong, you know, like to copy Silicon Valley to Thailand because all, all the um, all the attempt to copy Silicon Valley to like the rest of the world is all fail, you know, it's all fail. Because like we have like personality, we have character, we have our own DNA. We should grow into something in ourselves that really correspond to our heart, you know, like we have our startup spirit, which is really like unique for Thai people or Thailand or Chiang Mai, you know. Chiang Mai startup scene doesn't have to be like different, doesn't have to be like the same as like, Bangkok startup scene and kind of thing, but we grow in our own way and help each other. We co-work like what Habba said, you know? Bringing Silicon Valley to Thailand is actually bringing the seed of innovation and plant it and then like water it and then nurture it and see it grow and help it grow. So it's like a five-day accelerated experiential learning on startup. And um, it's kind of like I distill all my knowledge in like seven years in Silicon Valley and also like discuss with the expert and then like taught only only the very, very basic, very critical, fundamental knowledge of startup from ideation into fundraising. And simulate a startup life in five days. Startup life is similar to like RPG game, you know, like, you know, every time you die, you can reset and then go back again, you know. <laughs> There's always a god. There's always an angel to help you, you know. And sometimes, like, you know, like, good guy can turn to bad guy, like, venture capital can turn to be, like, very chalky and then bite you and then eat you alive, you know. <laughs> that kind of thing. But the goal is that, like, you simulate a startup life in five days so that people that are not really right for startup, they join startup because, like, they read in TechCrunch. They're like, oh, yeah, I want to be Mark Zuckerberg. Everyone want to be Mark Zuckerberg. You know, but probably like not everyone can be that. And then like they join startup for the wrong purpose. I want to make money, you know. I want to make money. I want to be a billionaire, you know. I want to be famous. I want to be, I want to be a billionaire of <laughs> something like that, you know. And then like it's for the wrong purpose. They don't really have a passion. They don't have a meaning, you know. And it's better for them like to save those people from wasting their like three or two probably like two to five years of their life from like doing something that they don't really love, they screw up their life, you know? So I think like I saved a lot of life, you know? I saved a lot of time. <laughs> so I think it's very good. And also like inspiration, we, I mean like permission to change the world is really like a big, big word. And actually like it's, it's, it's something like that. But I believe that like everyone, not only in Silicon Valley, they have a permission. Every, everyone in, even in Vietnam, in Thailand, or in Chiang Mai, everyone has a permission to change the world, to do something good to the world, even like for a big or, or small way, you know? You have like a permission. And they're like, so in order to do that, we fly the expert from Silicon Valley and also the local expert. And they're like, um, to, to teach them like, and also like give them the war story and also like teach them that like, hey, in order to be like, you know, really, really like successful in the global arena, this is the bar that you have to go. This is the where, where you have to be. And we focus on practice, not a theory, like make things, break things, and then remake things, and then screw it up again. You screw up several times, and then like, you know, you learn about like um, the real startup life. And we don't really like talk about a theory at all. That's no buzzword, MBA word, which I actually, I sadly, I graduated from MBA program, and I think like that's so much too much for it. You pay like 90% of things on like buzzword, you know? 
And um, we, in order to maximize learning, like um, we have like another marketing gimmick again, you know, like all the um, all the entrepreneur or startup people, they are good at like making gimmick, you know. So we maximize learning. So in our first class, we have like 240 people apply to the program. We select 40 of them, and then like the uh, we from diverse background, but they share one common DNA. We call disruptor DMA, like one two Y square. Like they are half full class. They are willing to learn. They have something. They are, they are willing to learn, and they have like a breadth and depth of knowledge. And they are willing to challenge the status quo. They are willing to ask why. They have intellectual curiosity. And one year later, like um, we have 15,000 members and 150 plus alumni. Uh, by the end of this year, there will be 200. And um, they make like some good progress, some good successes. I think it's like, and they know as well that they make some early win, but it's still far, far, far. This is like the first step of like the 10,000 step journey, you know, but at least it's good enough for to bring Thailand into the radar of the startup ecosystem in the regional. And even some people like the media or VC, they say like Thailand has become a totally different in the scene, but it's still a long, long way. We are behind so many countries, but this is the thing. We make a good first step and we realize this is a long, long way to go. And even though we can teach like um, education, we can teach like knowledge, that kind of thing. But what I realized is that like um, it's very difficult to transform mentality and mindset. So the first thing that we hand over to them is the failure, the permission to fail. Like um, it's the thing that I learned first when I entered Silicon Valley. They said like you get two permission when you enter Silicon Valley. When you make first step, when you like just leave the plane, you you are handed like one permission, which is like the permission to fail. In Silicon Valley, you can fail many times, and at the same time, you can still like become someone, you can still raise funds. And then like many people like fail many times before they become really successful. And uh, for Thai people, like when you fail, you basically become a complete loser. You become a dog, you know? And it's even a sick dog, you know? And it's like, um, like a taboo to say like about failure, you know? People are so shy about that, that kind of thing. And especially if you become like the top son, you know, like the first son of the family, Chinese family, it's so difficult to talk about failure. You're not allowed to fail at all. So like, it's like to confront that, to address that failure, and the mentality to deal with failure is the first thing that we need to do. So in the class, like we provide like a safe environment, relatively safe. Basically, no one really say like, so we make a rule that like you can say like you are so stupid when people like make or pitch a like, very bad idea. So they learn how to deal with failure in a safe environment and learn to adapt and iterate fast and fail fast. And I think that's the key thing. They fail really fast. Many people like fail like since their first pitch, which is really good. It saves them times, you know? And then again, like we give them another permission to change the world. Like they are like the rest of the startup people in the in the rest of the world, they have a chance to change the world. This is like the, uh, the other thing that f I find it very difficult to change the mindset as well. For Thai people, we, we normally, we don't be ambitious enough. We don't be ambitious enough, you know? We believe that like, okay, like, okay, just global market. Actually, like, I will address only Chiang Mai, you know? Like, I'll do like, um, I'll do an application that only like focus on female age 15 to 25 in Chiang Mai. Well, actually, like, probably around like, you know, Ka Suan Gao area only, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, how many people are living in that area, you know? And it's, it's kind of like something that I don't like, so, and I want to address it. In order for this country to move it forward, we need a permission to change the world. They need to think big since the first step. It's not enough anymore, and everyone knows in this region, it's not enough to think about only like Thailand. Because like um, when AAC happened, regionalization, that kind of thing, you know, like competition will come like from all over the place. You need to think regionally at the first step, if not global, since the first step. Mm -hmm. And then you have a permission to change the world as well. And then you, you start from a very, very big vision, and then like you know like it's like a one million step journey and then you just do it, do it, just like make one step, go buy Nike and just do it. Just walk one first step, you know? And I think like uh, this is like, again, disrupt itself, it make like some good progress, but I think like many people start to doubt whether like Thailand startup ecosystem that just like grow rapidly in the past like couple of years might be a fad. I don't believe that. I said, I think that's bullshit. I think this is real. There might be someone that will be a real person. The seed of innovation that a lot of people here and a lot of people in Bangkok, a lot of people like throughout Thailand that help each other to plant the seed of innovation and try to grow that. We see a lot of tree, already small, small one. Our goal is to work with the ecosystem partner 
from the rest, both locally and both regionally, to sustain that kind of momentum and make it real. Water it, nurture it, and if you have like people working in startup scene, you know, like just pat their back, give them food, you know, because they live on ramen, they live on pizza and soda, you know, or give them shelter, give them for basic necessity, you know, and encourage them, help them as much as you can. Because why? We believe that startup, startup is not really like startup is not really like a way to make money, but basically to make a difference to the world. And also, this country really need positive and meaningful difference and we believe that as a Thai country like for Thai people this last decade was a lost decade for us but this decade can be a decade of hope decade of change and decade of transformation and entrepreneurship and startup can be one tool that help drive and make that happen by the end of this decade if we dream high and we will and if we fight hard and we will if we never give up and we won't, if we step up our game every time, by the end of this decade, Thailand will be a totally different country by the hands of us, all of us here. And Thailand will be a totally different country. It's in your hands. If you make your first step, never give up and things will happen. You can change Thailand and change the world. Thank you.